As Governor Ron DeSantis signing a bill into law this morning that would ban transgender females from participating in women's sports, and he happened to do it on the first day of Pride Month. The law, which goes into effect a month from today, is controversial and surely will be challenged legally. The bill is called the Fairness in Women's Sports Act, which means participation in girls and women's sports would be contingent on determining the student's biological sex. Transgender athletes would have to play on teams based on their assigned sex at birth, showing their birth certificate as proof. The governor said it's all about having an equal playing field. We're not only making sure women have opportunities for scholarships and competition at the highest level, we're also putting uh, in statute ways to actually vindicate the rights of any women athletes who may be discriminated against. So one other thing to note under this new law, students can actually sue a school if it allows a female transgender athlete to play on a ladies team. Governor DeSantis used Selena Sewell as an example in his signing ceremony this morning. She's from Connecticut and in a high profile case is suing to end the state's inclusion policy after several transgender girls won track and field titles. My junior year, I was denied the chance to compete at the regional New England championships. I missed advancing to the next level of competition in the 55 meter dash by just two spots, two spots that were taken by biological males. It was frustrating, heartbreaking, and demoralizing to be sidelined in my own sport. Several Florida lawmakers like Representative Anna Escamani out of Orange County are speaking out against the new law, calling it transphobic. She said, quote, it is shameful that our governor and Florida's Republican Party would attack a group of people who already experience constant discrimination, bullying and high rates of suicide. And St. Pete's mayor had some strong words for the governor. If you don't think that was intentional, you're kidding yourself. It was very intentional. He knew exactly what he was doing by signing it today. Uh, and it is wrong on so many different levels. Mayor Kreisman calling the governor's decision to sign the bill on the first day of Pride Month a slap in the face. And the director of St. Pete Pride said he'll continue to fight for young transgender people. Kids need to feel love and acceptance and they need to thrive. And we want them to get to adulthood as happy, whole people. That, that's what every society, what every family, what every parent, what every educator wants. Now, the human rights campaign says they intend to sue, pointing to this being the latest in a surge of anti-transgender legislation that's happening across the country. And taking a deeper dive, there have been 25 bills proposed so far this year across several states that ban transgender youth from competing in sports. The number of anti-transgender bills introduced overall is much higher. Freedom for All Americans, that's a bipartisan campaign that aims to have full non-discrimination protections for the LGBTQ community nationwide. They've been tracking the bills introduced. Some states had multiple bills about sports competition, including four here in our state. The one signed today, though, was the only one that passed. And remember, there's the NCAA aspect of this. When this was first floated by the governor, the governing body for collegiate athletics threatened to pull championship events in any state that passes anti-trans athlete laws. We'll see if they follow through because we have a ton coming up. Emily Arena is scheduled to host five events in the next five years. We calculated the economic impact from just two of them, the Women's Volleyball Championship and the Women's Final Four at approximately $39 million.